with beer. Hello, podcast kittens. It's Kathy Cat. Oh, lady beer. Welcome you to another bone-shattering installment of Cat, Cat with, with beer. beer. We have a remarkable guest for you Ooh, today. Yes, we I do. Am able to remark mm-hmm. about the quality of today's guest. Yes. Introduce yourself, sir, please. Ah, yes, uh, to the camera. Oh, oh, yeah. te- ask hey, if everyone. you'd like to. You don't have to, to talk the camera, to the camera. Whatever you feel more comfortable. You can talk to the wall. We're definitely going to look at you. you. Yeah, just not, just not used to talking in front of people. I apologize for that. <laughs> uh, no problem. <laughs> uh, I'm a traditional Japanese rakugo mm. comic storyteller, and my name is Katsura Sunshine. Katsura Sunshine. Katsura Sunshine. Welcome, Welcome to Cat with Beer from Japan. Japan. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much. Sir. So that. Rakugo. What rakugo. is Rakugo? Easily explain. How do you explain Rakugo to your friends? I say, and I explain it on stage when I'm performing abroad, and it's a 400-year tradition of storytelling in Japan. The stories have been passed down from master to apprentice, master to apprentice, master to apprentice, through the ages up until the present day. Wow. Oh, master to apprentice. Master to apprentice. Storytelling. A traditional form of storytelling. But storytelling, yes. Okay. I know more as comedy though so it is like storytelling with the with a twist of comedy in it yeah uh yeah it's comic it's generally comic story mm-hmm. telling although not all the stories are necessarily comic there are some heart <gasps> heart-wrenching mm-hmm. stories really? of human drama but for the most part it's a comic storytelling tradition so <laughs> the storyteller will start with uh what's called a makura, which is the pillow, the introduction part to get to know the audience. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. almost identical to stand-up comedy, except you're kneeling oh. on a cushion. Oh. Right. But it's like... It's kneel-down comedy. It's kneel-down, <laughs> sit-down comedy, kneel-down comedy, yeah. Instead of stand-up. Exactly. Uh-huh. But uh, the the content feels like stand-up comedy. It's the, the storyteller's own material. Right, really? Observational humor, some experiences, but also it's a chance for the storyteller to inform the audience of some points of... Uh, Japanese culture in the Edo period or 300 years ago, 200 years ago, that they might want to know for the story that's coming up. Really? So the explanation is part of the art form, which makes it very unique, I think, in in performance arts. Okay, so and now, so this is a this is a one human operation, or it's a piece one of person theater? kneeling on a cushion. That's one it. Pe- that's yeah. it. But it is a piece of theater at the same time. Yeah. So one person kneeling on a cushion. You start off with a given an introduction, and yeah. then continue telling a story that entices the audience. Yeah. The the introduction part slowly but surely goes into the theme of the story you're about to tell, mm-hmm. and then you kind of seamlessly bridge into the story. And the interesting about Rakugo stories proper is there's Almost no narration. No There's narration? no. It doesn't start with once upon a time. It starts with. Konnichiwa, itteru ka. Konnichiwa, oh, dare to motaro mahan kai na, machoto agari na. Which means, hello, anybody there? Oh, I was wondering who it was you. It's you. It's you. I was wondering who it was. It's you. It's you. Come on over. Come on over. Come on in. Oh, All right. So in. suddenly it's con- it's conversation, and the stories are almost 100 percent conversation. So you have to glean the situation without somebody spoon feeding it to you just through the conversation you know kind of what's going on and you're playing two at least two characters at once for the most part you're playing two characters three I have one story that plays four it's hard to keep wow. track of four wow really yeah but it's usually it usually comes down to a, a conversation between two characters okay and now that you said these are stories that are handed down master to apprentice master to apprentice throughout the ages yeah so you're telling stories from 300 years ago I am okay. yeah and th- even 400 years ago like t- t- if you think about it time of shape Shakespeare. Shakespeare okay. was alive when this mm-hmm. art form started. Wow, so, yeah. I see. So you said two people having a conversation. Is, is it possible to give us like a very quick sample of how that would go? Uh, Can I put yeah. you on the spot there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, get ready. This is going to sure, be good. So, so, <laughs> the world's shortest track ago. Okay. <laughs> two ladies gossiping in front of their house in old Edo, Japan. Did you hear? Mrs. Takahashi down the street fell down flat on her face and her face became completely disfigured. Oh, really? That's too bad, yes. But the doctor is amazing. He managed to put her face right back to the way it was before. Oh, really? That's too bad. Ah! <laughs> ah! Take that, Mrs. I can't remember her name. Takahashi. <laughs> Takahashi. Take that, Takahashi, son. Oh, the shade. The shade. <laughs> shade oh thrown. Okay, I see. Wow. Gotta be careful. One time I had a very small audience, and my good friend, but very senior to me, Mrs. Takahashi, oh. was in the audience. Yeah. <laughs> Did Mrs. Takahashi give you the back of her hand? Yeah, afterwards? she should have. <laughs> she should have. I should have changed the name. Wow. So, okay. So, so you perform in English and in Japanese? Yeah, right now, I perform in English and Japanese. 
I'm going to be performing in French in May. French? Yeah, in uh, in Montreal, and then expand mm -hmm. that to um, uh, hopefully France and uh, other places, certainly in New York and London. Right now, I'm performing uh, once a month on Broadway in New York oh and once a month in London's West End. Wow. Really? And then I come back to Tokyo. So I'm doing that triangle every month. That's amazing. You're on Broadway and the West End. Yeah. That's remarkable. Broadway what? started in... Uh, 2019, and we went six months before they closed the theaters for COVID, but this same theater continued uh, after, after COVID ended. So technically in my fifth year oh on Broadway goodness. and West End, uh, it, I started um, in December of 2022, so just after COVID stuff. Wow. That's very impressive. That's those are not, hey, anyone I, listening, those are not easy gigs to get, just in case you were wondering. I did not know that Rakugo could get you to Broadway. Or to Broadway. So funny that you say that, because I, in my youth, I was writing musicals mm -hmm. um, in Toronto, and one of my musicals, based on Aristophanes' Clouds, so ancient Greek mm -hmm. theater, had it was a little bit of a hit in Toronto. Went fifteen months at this small theater, and I had I've been dreaming of going to Broadway mm. since then. Mm -hmm. um, and but it was when I, while I was researching Greek theater, so a scholar in a in a scholarly uh, article mm -hmm. wrote about the similarities between the Greek theater and Japanese no and kabuki. Oh. So because of Greek theater, because there's no Google at the time or mm. YouTube, oh. it's twenty five years ago. I just came, came to Japan for a few months to watch Kabuki, basically, and then just fell in love with it, stayed. And when I became, when I, when I got my master to take me, when, my, when I became an apprentice, I thought, okay, forget Broadway. I give up that dream. Being a Rakugo storyteller in Japan uh. is much more interesting to me. And so I gave that up. And who would have thought that everything would come full circle and Rakugo would bring me to Broadway? Bring you to Broadway. I certainly wasn't intending that, but it's funny how things could work it's out. It's funny how life works out with that. Yeah. You're correct. Didn't you mention that you, uh, the second you left China, you became famous in China? Yeah, so, well, yeah. yeah I lived in Hong Kong. Yeah, I lived Sorry, there Hong for Kong, six, right? six years. Couldn't get famous uh, over there. And then yeah. I came to Japan and did well here. And that made me famous, famous in Hong Kong and China. Right. So, so it's so not that, always yeah. the direct route. It's not always no. the right? direct route. That's correct. So, so, now, so you... Oh, sorry. So you did Clouds, uh, that, that, but I heard that Cloud also became the longest-running Canadian musical of all time. It was until uh, what broke it? What broke the record? Book of Mormon. No, no, that's not Canadian. Uh, was so it for Canadian? On, until <laughs> for, <laughs> Canadian writers, for a <laughs> long time, it was some new musical. You know you the nine eleven of... musical, the Come From Away. Oh, oh that I think that I think broke my record. But really? for, yeah, for a long time, the longest-running. Yeah, the longest-running. It's pretty. Pinpoint. I don't know. This doesn't make any. It's not a boast, but the longest-running musical written by a Canadian playing in a Canadian theater. That's remarkable. Yay. So now, hang on. So let's just let's just back up one second. Okay. Sure. So you're from the land from of Toronto, the Trudeaus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Fantastic. Which explains why you speak the French. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. So now, how did this? How did this whole thing eventuate from the beginning? How do we go from? You got through high school or something? Did you go to drama school or music school or something? Or in? I was taking classics. Okay. And in university, uh, they had they had something called High School Day. Which we're trying to recruit students. Cause classic departments. I don't know if you've been to a classics department recently, but there, no, there's no, there's very few students. It's not oh. coming into classics. She's been to a science yeah. fiction department. She's got a. Well, that's probably there. booming then, right? <laughs> we had about six students. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, same thing as a Greek class mm -hmm. or a Latin class. So they try to recruit students. So oh, professors give these really cool lectures that come, could entice some students to want to come and study. And the students put on an Aristophanes uh, play. Uh -huh. And that was a lot of fun. Uh -huh. Well, you know, there's a t it's very scatological humor and sexual oh, and really? very low humor, tons of swearing. <laughs> so it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to do. But the high school kids have a ball, obviously. Like, there's some, this is not your normal, like... Not allowed to not do that. Not normal school. Shakespeare, not yeah. <laughs> With so Mrs. Takahashi watching. Oh, well, yeah. You're in a lot of trouble. We, the students, were uh, with this play, were um, were saddled with the task of recruiting the the future of the of the classics in the world, oh, wow. that kind of thing. But I I got I got so I got so into it. I started writing I started writing the translations myself, and then oh. one clouds just became a hit at University of Toronto. And one of the cast members, a very good friend of mine, her father was a kind of wealthy investor, and he yeah. said, "You should you should leave school and." become a playwright to produce this stuff. Wow. So I'll fund your first play. And so he invested something like thirty thousand dollars. Oh wow. Which is not is not very much now considering, you know, trying to go to Broadway and all this is this yeah. costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. But at the time I was like, massive amounts of money. How, how, 
how am I ever going to repay the even the f the feeling of getting, yeah. you know, that much money? But he, yeah, he funded the first run, and it, and it, by coincidence, the theater owner also was tired of booking his theaters for three week runs, oh. and four week runs, and that is too much detail work. So he said, okay, if you if you if your show does become a hit, then you can run as long as you want. So we had a kind of open ended run, which is rare for a small theater mm -hmm. in uh, Toronto. Certainly. How small are we talking? Two hundred seats? Like two hundred seats? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. But yeah, went eight shows a week for 15 months. Eight shows a week for 15 months. It's a lot of work. Wow. So wait yeah. a second. He, he pretty much said quit school and do the musical. Do the musical, yeah. And gave, gave you the money. And did yeah. you quit school? Or I did. did. I, well, I was in grad school at, at the okay. time. Okay. <laughs> well, by what's, then. What's like a, sorry, what is grad school? Like? Grad, grad school, school, school. So it's after you graduate. It's like your, for your master's. Oh, so oh like okay. I'm sorry. Right, cool, so you, you, you ditched the master's, but you I became the master's, a, became a, a theater producer. Yeah. Wow. Wow, okay. Okay. That's amazing. So, so as I say, studying Greek led me to Japan in that roundabout weird way. way. Roundabout way. Roundabout way. And when I had been here, if, if you look at Rakugo, well, you saw the little bit I did, but basically, unlike the Kabuki, they have the masks, they have the mm -hmm. dancing, there's the kimonos. Even if you don't understand a word, you can totally enjoy it. But with Rakugo, it's an, it's an old guy sitting on a cushion like this, turning his head back and forth. If you don't understand Japanese, then it's mm -hmm. not very interesting. So I didn't really come across it until I was here for five years. And at my favorite yakitori shop, they had a regular show because the oh, owner of the yakitori wow. shop was also a massive Rakugo fan. In All fact, right. wanted to be a Rakugo storyteller himself mm -hmm. before oh, he wow. took over his, uh, I think, his father's business. Okay. So, well, what made you decide to, like you said, you studied Greek and you decided to come to Japan. So you came in 1999. Yeah. What was like the occasion? What was the goal? Were you already coming here with like, I want to study this? Or was it first of just like, let's have a Just, you know what, I was between musicals. I, was, I kept writing musicals and I had time and some, well, because, because there was this article about Kabuki and No, that sparked my interest. And I had also had... A few friends that just said Japan is the greatest place on earth. For, and they all had their own various reasons, depending on what kind of work they did, and et cetera, and what kind of experience they had. But everybody just said it's incredible. So I said, I, I got to go. Okay. And I came. So it wasn't even specific. It was literally, and not even to study, no, which sounds really deep and impressive. And I wish I had so I could say that, but mm -hmm. I can't. Really just to see a couple plays. And to see some kabuki and then maybe get some ideas and go home and write a musical maybe based on it. This was before cultural appropriation and all that. <laughs> yeah, right. So, I don't, but yeah, I had, but just f my third day here, I think, I said, I'm not going back to Canada. Ooh. Wow, It's really? too, Ooh, too interesting in Japan, yeah. <laughs> That's about, and sorry, that was what year? That was? 1999. 99. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so a long time. So you decided to stay. What did you do to stay? Because now, now the journey begins, the Japan life begins. Yeah. The old get the visa, that begins. Oh, that one. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Yeah, we I, that story. I, I had a lot of visas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I started by teaching at university, and um, what were you teaching? Teaching English, of course. What mm -hmm. else could I teach? Uh, so yeah, the, I by teaching university, studying Japanese culture and that kind of thing. But once I once I once I saw Rakugo, I was hooked. Really? It was like love at first sight. This is what I was born to do. So okay, so but for Rakugo, I mean, your grasp of the Japanese language mm -hmm. needs to be pl pretty exceptional. Watching you do that, like my Japanese is not at a level where I think I could do that. Yours probably is. I don't think mine is. So but... how long did it take you before you could handle Rakugo in Japanese? Because that would have required some intense language study before you got to that. Yeah. And, and sorry, I, I, to intersect that. First of all, how much language do you did you have to have to go to a sensei and say, "Take me on as your apprentice." Yeah, that's a great question. The shisho is, uh, well, first of all, you have to speak Japanese to be able to do it. But um, once you become an apprentice, there's, there's, two, there's two aspects of the language that you have to be concerned about. First, it's the language to be able to play the roles. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is, before you even get to that, you have to know very polite forms of Japanese because a simple desmas, like the normal politeness that we would think is mm. like teinego, which is polite language, yeah. even that is in, like insulting the ma someone who's above you in status as much as a master to an mm. apprentice, especially a starting apprentice. So that's where my master literally on the second day just said, don't talk and study this book. And it was polite Japanese Ooh. language. Wow. Wow. Polite wow. You so weren't talking up Because to your everything enough. I said sounded like... A, I was trying to be really polite. He'd say, oh, my God, era soyana, like this guy on his high horse. Right? Really? And I was trying to be super polite. So that's how far I was in my perception of the language and what I really had to be using. Wow. Um, uh, 
For everyone who hasn't studied Japanese, uh, the language features, you speak in different ways with various levels of politeness. And so there's a kind of a particular form of the language that you have to use if you're talking to, say, the emperor. And it's to use the, the version with which you talk to the prime minister would be very insulting to the emperor because the emperor is the highest possible possible role. So I imagine for your master, you, yeah, you have to talk to a super kego level, yeah? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so yeah, we absolutely. have like Kegel, which is like the basic for polite language that, for example, we also have in German, where you like use to people just as a form of respect. But then the song Kegel, which is the one that you meant, Lady Beard, is the, the one you really use for gods, for emperors, or for customer service suddenly recently. Yeah, isn't that something? I always thought, I got told when I was first studying Japanese, I'd never call someone in summer mm. because that's like, oh, they're God. And then the service industry, yep, like waiters, oh, all, all you summer, summer. All summer, yeah. So I was like, oh. absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> well, okay, cool. So first things first, your master's upset because you're not speaking politely. <laughs> so he gives you a book, says study. I just would have run and find out how you got the foot in the door as a foreigner. It must have been the first time, right? Yeah. How did you get the foot in the door of becoming an apprentice? Yeah. How'd you even meet the master? Yeah, that, oh. that, that. I mean, I went to the, to the master's show or shows, a few of them, oh. his solo shows, and then decided that I really wanted him to be my master. And then, and then I did a kind of traditional... Traditionally, you would either wait for the master in, in front of the theater where he's coming. All right. Mm. Or traditionally, you'd go to... You'd find out his address and go to his door. These mm. days, I don't know. Sounds I don't a people bit stalker I don't know if they yeah. appreciate yeah. that these days. But yeah. frowned upon. So trying, trying to... Or asking a master to take you as his apprentice is still in Japanese called mon o tataku, which means knocking on the, the door of the mm. mon. Um... So I waited for my master in front of the, uh, what was it? Not in front of the theater, but in front of the, uh, what do you call it? Gakuya Gucci. I'm losing my English. <laughs> uh, the dressing room door. Yeah. When I knew he was going to be coming out. And uh, wore a kimono. And then when he came out of the car, I got down on my knees and said, Master, Shisho, deshi, deshi kudasai, which is, Master, please take me as your apprentice. Oh, wow. And uh, after that, he said, Okay, you can come to any of my shows or wherever I'm working. His regular TV show was the easiest one to access. Have you ever seen Shinkon san Irashai? Sounds familiar. Have I? I'm sure I probably have. Probably. What happens? He, he uh, interviews newlyweds, basically. Oh, yes, I know that show. Yeah, he was the host for, he retired last year, but he was the host for 51, 52 years. Sounds oh. like a dangerous show. Oh, no, no, it's yeah. like young, no, near, young, nearly wets, young wets, yeah. and like gushing about how much they like their partner oh, well, and nice. stuff like that. It's it's actually very wholesome, but kind of lovely. funny as well. Do they, don't they ever sing, like sing a song or something sometimes? They don't, uh, I don't remember singing a song. No. Uh, that could have happened. Maybe there that's, were 50 that's years more recent worth of one, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, it's but like But if, if the couple okay. says anything remotely scandalous or salacious or sexual, he would fall out of his chair, uh -huh. and he and everybody would watch this show every literally, Sunday. Literally fall out of. Yeah, his he had chair. a special chair that you could. I'm not supposed to tell you that. That's a secret. That's a trade <laughs> secret. But he literally just fall out of the chair. But that was the whole point of the show. Everybody tuned in on Sunday to see when from the start of the show. You're waiting for him to fall out of the chair. Oh, so you can that's see. Like his that's it. That's it. That's it. Kime Gagger. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, his. His, what would you say in English? Decided is a punchline, joke, punchline or something yeah, like that. His yeah. Japanese comedians his have actions. punchlines, which is their kind of their character punchline. And then the fun of the comedy is seeing on today's episode, how do they get from whatever circumstance they're in to the punchline? So in this case, falling off your chair. Yeah, yeah. it's like I a see. trademark catchphrase. That's a right. trademark catchphrase or... It's like, like, you know, on Seinfeld... Uh, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, it's like a full house. You got it, dude. You know, yeah. Kids in South Park. Uh, uh, I, just said, about Willis, I just said the kids in South Park when I meant to say the kids in, what show did I say? Full House. Yeah, Full House. <laughs> that Lady Beard's brain just took a nap for a moment there. I'm really sorry. So it's like with that one moment you look forward to, right? Like, whatever. Uh, yeah. Simpsons, the though moment or something. Yeah. Anything oh, that repeats or... every time. Yeah, I was going to say, um, on Seinfeld, when Kramer opens the door and comes oh, yeah, in, right. like that, it was—it's that kind of thing. You know, it's going to happen, and you're just waiting for it. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay. um, yeah. so telling me is you about? I imagine his reaction would have been, "What is going on?" Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Nobody. I'd I'd found out later that that was the traditional way, but now we're more into more modern times. One, one uh, apprentice below me. He got in by writing an email to my master's office. <laughs> Oh, really? And then you say, please take me as a president. I'm wondering if you could tell me what one would do if one wanted to become a rock and roll storyteller. It's like, 
どうやってラホカになりますかねとか、it was really casual language and everything. <laughs> He was accepted in、uh, uh, on the spot basically within、wow. one month. Really? Yeah. Times have changed. The one below me wrote a, wrote a letter to the office, and we were de- the apprentices are in the office. So we see the letters, and we, we actually knew him as a waiter to、yeah. a restaurant we were going to. We encouraged him to come be, become a storyteller. He was only, already doing manzai, but had broken up with his partner. Oh, right. Which is another type of Japanese、so、comedy. Japanese where comedy. Two, two person comedy.、Other. Abbott and Costello, kind of. Yes. Yeah. So this guy wrote a letter. Say, I write a letter. It'll be really formal. He wrote a letter in beautiful handwriting. Calligraphy, Japanese calligraphy, but he missed one line in the master's name, so it was spelled completely wrong.、Oh. <laughs> he got in within a week. Okay. Oh, really? For oh, me, okay. doing the、uh, traditional way, the, the way it would have been done 300 years ago,、yeah. it took me eight months. Oh, oh my、man. God. Seems unreasonable, frankly.、Mm, but maybe it was also the fact that, oh, it's a foreigner? What am I supposed to do? Are they serious? That yeah, kind of that's、thing? exactly what it was. So it's, he was actually being kind. We,、mm. we were able to get to know each other and feel each other out for eight months, and he said, look it. If you like, I can start teaching you.、Uh, what、right、was going、now. on during those eight months? Were you going out and having yakitori or what was going on? Yeah, probably a lot of yakitori. It was basically, I was continuing with my. I was in grad school at the time. And so you were just hanging out with him after hours and whatnot? I would go, I, I wouldn't really hang out, but any, any job he had. So to, to go to the TV, the recording of the newlyweds show,、yes. you'd stand at, at the parking lot、uh, for 15 minutes, make sure you got there in time for his car to come, and then you'd say, Ohio's I'm us. And then. While he was changing in the dressing room, there's too many people in there, so I'd have to stand in the hall for a couple hours. And then we'd follow him to the stage where they had it's a live, it's like done in a theater. So you follow them, and from the side of the stage, we'd watch the show.、Yeah. And then when it's finished, go back to the dressing room, I'd stand in the hall again. And then as he was leaving, I'd say, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And he'd say, Right,、mm-hmm. next, you can come next. So, my part is thank you very much for allowing me to study. And he said, Yeah, come next week if you want. That is the most、okay. apprentice y type system I've ever heard. It oh, yeah. It sounds、It's、a bit like、hardcore. martial arts as well, like、yep. the whole bowing. Also, and I, first,、yeah. first you have to clean the dojo before you're actually allowed to even step into yeah, it, yeah, kind yeah. of thing. Yep. It's, yeah, it's very much like it's very, very traditional in that way. Wow. I, I went to my master's place for three years, not one day off. You know, right in the morning, and、uh, we did the cleaning, did the laundry,、wow. folded kimonos, menial chores. Oh, wow. And,、uh, and then you don't go home, you don't go back to your、uh, residence until the master says, You guys can go. Do you know what? I need an apprentice. <laughs> <laughs> well, who wants to be late if he has an apprentice coming to my c h o r e s It's a good <laughs> gig if you're the master. A good gig if、wow. you're the master, right?、Yeah. I see. So that so, is like, so the, the system is you support the master all around.、Uh, you, you are allowed to watch them. Will he give you pointers or is it first just watching?、Uh, that's a very interesting question, too. So for the three year apprenticeship, he doesn't spend too much time actually teaching you. So you watch, basically, you watch and learn. The phrase in Japanese is ge o nusumu, which, is,、mm. which means steal the art.、Mm. Uh, nobody's going to give it to you. Watch, watch and learn, imitate, and start by imitation. So, very, it's quite antithetical to the way theater people would be educated in the West. It's, you start from, and I, I think some sports are like this too, the kata. So, you start from, with the form, you imitate the master until you learn the story properly, and then you make it your own after.、Oh, so, you're not starting with feelings. You don't care about your feelings. Just no, move your hand the right way, that kind of thing.、Uh, that's it. That is the opposite, 100% of the West. 100%, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. And,、um, What you would do, you would memorize the story from beginning to end and then say,、eh, Shisho okeiko o n e g a i s h i m a s which means, Master, I, I, I know a story. Can you rehearse it with me? Can you watch it for me?、Oh. And then he'd find some time and he'd say, Okay, go ahead. And then I remember the first time I did a story from beginning to end, he was right to the end. It's in Japanese, right? And he said, he said Sunshine, so no gaijin no namari wa wazato? Which means,、oh. Sunshine, is that a foreigner's accent? On purpose. <laughs> like, oh, wow.、Okay. He's, he's making fun of me. <laughs> no, no, I'm a foreigner. <laughs> <Yeah> . So、uh, once he says that story is yours, then, you, then it, you're free to do with it what you want and you have permission to perform it、wow. um, for the rest of your life. Until your master or some other master, you can go to other masters after you finish your apprenticeship, you can go to any master you want to and they'll teach you. Um, but you need the permission of a master to do, the, to do the story. Oh, because the stories have passed on for generations. So, say, for example, your master has、uh, 50 stories, he will give one of his stories to you. Is that what it means? No. 
No, everybody's free to learn any stories. Oh, okay. Oh. So there's no like yeah. limitation, but you still need no. the okay from him. You need the okay, but that okay is not like copyright for mm -hmm. the story. That okay is that, okay, I've given you my imprimatur that you've learned the story well enough to perform it professionally. I see. Um, and you also make up your own stories or there's a set number of stories and they, that's all that can be told? There's a set number of stories, but some storytellers like to do their own stories as well. Okay. My master has written 350 of his own stories. Oh, wow, and okay. he, does, he very rarely does traditional stories. He oh. he's kind of specializes in his own stories. Oh, wow. For me, performing on Broadway, performing the West End, the first part, the introduction part that I told, told you about, that's all my, that's all your own material. So I really feel like I should do a traditional story. Mm. No, no need for my story. Traditional story or my master stories are really fun to do as well. Mm. But one of the two, so that I'm actually bringing some Japanese, it's, it's not the Sunshine Show. Mm. It's, it's bringing some Japanese over, yeah. I see. As an apprentice, do you like sleep somewhere on the set or what was like the life as an apprentice like? My master had, the, in the olden days, in fact, until somewhat recently, my master, even my master did this, but in the olden days, you would stay in the master's house. And then some of the apprentices would be helping the master all day. Some of the apprentices would be helping the master's wife all day. If the master oh. had children, you would be a, a big part of raising the children really? as apprentices, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah babysitter kind of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. So <laughs> my master's children were raised by my senior apprentices who wow. are about 20, 20, 20, 30 years in advance of me. Yeah. But yeah, at the time they were living at the at the home. For wow. us, we were wow. living in a little apartment rented by the master that was very close to the master's place. So we had that little bit of separation, which I think yeah. would psychologically is is great. But he could call you mm -hmm. at any time mm -hmm. and say one o'clock in the morning and say, "Sunshine, I can't find my glasses. Come look for them." <laughs> could happen. Wow. And if you smell of alcohol, then you big trouble. So you're not oh, supposed really? To, not well, supposed he... to drink. Not supposed to go on dates for that three years. Very very strict. Oh, really. There's a lot of systems in Japan that are like that. I've been told the um, the esports players, mm -hmm. like the guys who play Street Fighter oh, professionally, yeah. it's the same. They all have to live in a dorm. They're up at six a.m. Yeah, every day. Yeah, we had training. that in our podcast. Yeah, which is no shameless plug for yeah, yeah. a podcast episode ah, about esports. Ah, that's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. hey, hey, hey. Wow. Um, and that, so in 2013, you became a Canadian cultural ambassador. Oh yeah. How so does this work? You've got Japanese what? Rakugo, mm. Canadian cultural ambassador. What happened in between there as well? Like, when did you debut? Well, when I, did you start apprenticeship? When did you debut? When I did you become the ambassador? I started in 2008, I think. And then you debut your first story, like, while you're an apprentice, actually. Okay. Mm -hmm. You memorize one story, your master will put, him, put you in his show. Oh. For the first, like, ten minutes. Like you're the opener. opener. You're the oh, opener. Oh, yeah, so yeah, you're yeah, the yeah. opener to your master. Yeah. That's another place where Rakugo is... Incredible. You would never put, like, you're bad at that point. You only know one story, but you don't even know that well. You're really bad. So I, you imagine a virtuoso violinist putting their, like, three-year-old just starting <laughs> student to play Mary Had a Little Lamb, like in Carnegie <laughs> Hall. It, yeah, it would right. never happen. But with Rakugo, the audience is very much involved in the, the raising and nurturing the of the apprentices. It's so, like idols. That's like idols. Oh, it's like yeah. idols. Yeah. Is it similar? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so people say, oh, that, that must be the new apprentice. People are glad. They don't care if you're bad. You're, just, mm. you're there. That's the, that's the joy for the audience. Mm. Wow. And they can yeah. see you then improve over the, the coming months. Yeah, and then, and then maybe they become your follower and fan as well. So then, you know, I've been told, oh, you know, when you, the 10 years after I'd started, right? Oh, you started, you were terrible. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you got better. It's a big relief. Uh, <laughs> we were worried about you at that time, right? Well, so there are, there are like, and in this day and age, there are kind of rakugo otaku, yeah? People who are yeah. into rakugo. Yeah, there's a lot of really hardcore fans mm -hmm. that just go, they probably go see one or two rakugos a month, but certainly right. because you, like the yakitori master, where I, when I learned of rakugo for the first time, or I saw for the first time, Rakugo, the Rakugo world is structured in such a way that it's very easy for anybody to become an amateur producer, right. but invite pro professional storytellers, and they bring the stage stuff. You set up a little bit of a room to look like a, you'll say theater. It's really easy if you have a, you need a, a platform and, and a little bit of red cloth on it and maybe some chochin, some lamps, paper lamps. That's it. Mm. And so tons of local producers invite professionals to, uh, to, to work all the time. Wow. It's really well set up that way. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, yeah, it sounds good. So yeah. you, 
you debuted it, you were bad, sorry for saying that, and then you slowly moved your way up. What, what is, is there another milestone before you became the cultural ambassador? Yeah, the first one is you, uh, you finish your apprenticeship. So that's three years if it's Osaka and four years if it's Tokyo. And then you're sort of, you're on your own. You don't have to go see the master every day. Mm. Your indentured servitude has ended. You're, you're, free you're to, allowed you're to date, you're, you're allowed to drink to, uh, again. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, first time in three years. It's now it's game on, baby. It's game on, yeah. <laughs> Got to make up for lost time. Right. So um, at that point, then you're kind of in, in, in independent. They'd say in Japanese, ichinin maya. So uh, mm. the person unto yourself. You're you're human, finally. Mm. <laughs> Considered human. And then uh, I started a bit of a world tour, courtesy of the uh, embassies and consulates of Japan in, in different countries. So by this, I think by the third year, I was going to tour North America or something. And we invited my master to the um, Embassy of Canada in Tokyo. And they did a kind of Canadian cultural ambassador ceremony to go with the launching of the North American tour. Wow. Oh, that's a, well, congratulations on right. your ambassadorship. Cheers. Thank you very much. What's it like doing a go overseas? Yeah, it's so much fun. Really? You I would know, have thought it'd be, what the hell is going on? Yeah. It's interesting because you would think, even as a Canadian, oh. when I go to UK and a London comic is talking, like maybe one third of it, I don't know what's funny. So <laughs> even in the same language of English. So here we've got a, an ancient Japanese storytelling that's in maybe old Osaka dialect. Yeah, right. You're taking it in English and French. And you're taking it to like New York, London, all these places with different sensibilities. But I think because it's hundreds of year old stories that have, I mean, Edo period Japanese people and today modern Japanese people don't have the same heads either. So because it's crossed the time, the, the sort of the borders of time, then it can cross the borders of borders in, in, in a way. It can cross language barriers. I don't change a thing in translation. I don't adapt at all for the audience. It's all, right. it's all straight translation. And that's really satisfying in New, to go to New York and to do these routines exactly the way you do them in Japanese and have New Yorkers laugh at the exact same things that Japanese people laugh here. Wow. So over the time, can you even count how many performances you've done? Or how many oh, my you've God. Been you in? should have prepared me for that question. I have <laughs> no idea. <laughs> well, I heard like since 2014 that it was like 39 performances in seven countries, but I'm sure the number has now changed over the years. Yeah, sorry. That's, a, that's old information. I'm, mm. I mean, right now, right now, even with the triangle of, of New York, London, Tokyo. Then there's other places in between. Next month I'll perform in uh, Philadelphia Ooh. and uh, Kalamazoo. I did, there's a university there, and um, there's performances planned in uh, in you know when I go to London to to put them in Europe, uh, Barcelona, and um, Barcelona. and uh, Brussels. Are the two right. places. Wow. So trying to expand the world mm. empire of Rahul. Good to Australia and New Zealand. Right. Oh, can't okay, wait. Yeah. There, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, the first ever non-Japanese foreign Rahul storyteller yeah. in history, 100 years ago, he died. Exactly 100 years ago this year. Oh. His name was uh, Henry Black or Kairakte Burak. Okay. And he was Australian. It was Ozzy. Yeah. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. Yeah, there you go. Ozzy, 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 Ozzy. So Aussie. something about the colonies. I, right. I, the, I don't know. The Commonwealth. <laughs> The Commonwealth? The Commonwealth? <laughs> <laughs> There's actually a lot more things I want to ask. So oh. how about we split that and put that into the next Perfect. podcast? Yeah, sounds so good. So that's where we're going to focus on when how about how to be funny in Japan. Mm. In oh, the next, that'll, the next podcast. That'll, that'll be a short podcast. <laughs> uh, before we go, tell the good people where they can find you on the internet. At Katsura Sunshine. And Katsura Sunshine is spelled K-A-T-S-U-R-A and Sunshine. Uh, all one word, yeah? Yeah, all oh, one okay, word, fantastic. all lowercase. And that's the in all the places, the Twitter, Instagram, the Instagram, and yep, Twitter, right. I, uh, Twitter, Twitter, I don't do much. But mainly Instagram and... Instagram and TikTok, I started getting serious well, about it a couple months ago. Yeah. That's interesting. Ooh. All right, well, look, a lot of fun. listen, listeners, get yourself down to the internet and do some clickety-clack at Cuts of the Sunshine. While you're there, follow Kathy Cat. Where are you on the internet, Kathy Cat? Kathy Cat underscore TV on the Twitter, on the Twitch, on the Instagram, and Ladybeard. At Ladybeard underscore Japan at all the places. <laughs> and also my group, Babybeard underscore Japan. Also, at all 
all the places. And don't forget to follow at Cat with Beard and send us an email if you've got a question or a thing you want to say. Or comment on the YouTube video or mm -hmm. actually go to our Twitter. We have a Cat with Beard from Japan podcast Twitter as well. So tweet at us. And we'll be back in our next episode very soon with more Cuts in Our Sunshine. Cheers. Yeah, right. I've... Uh... I've never been the low energy guy in a room with three <laughs> no. people in front of microphones. Welcome to Cat with Beer. <laughs> Cheers. That was so much fun. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you very you. much. We'll see you all very soon on Thanks. Cat with Beer.